Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. This worship service begins the observance of Lent for this year. And as a part of our observance, we will be lighting candles to commemorate certain aspects of the Lenten season. We light this first candle to remember that Jesus was tempted, even as we ourselves have been tempted. And because of this, Jesus is able to help us as we face our own temptations. We welcome the Spirit of Jesus into this worship. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Oh. Sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Oh, yes, Lord. Although you see me gone so long. Oh, yes, Lord. I have my troubles here below. Oh, yes, Lord. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Will you pray with me, please? Loving, forgiving, nurturing, ever faithful God. Lead us not into temptation. In fact, lead us away. Lead us away from the temptation to see our perspective as truth and other possibilities as foolishness and heresy. Lead us away from the temptation to use violence and force, physically and verbally, to achieve our desires. For all those who are suffering from others imposing their will on them, Victims of domestic violence, victims of oppressive systems, victims of wars. We pray that you will help them find places of refuge and help us to find ways to make the violence cease. Lead us away from hoarding resources for ourselves. Lead us to find ways that we can be generous to those truly in need of food, water, and even compassion. Lead us to find ways to change the systems that side with the few at the expense of the many. Lead us away from the temptation to judge others. Lead us away from assuming the worst in others and assuming that any evil that comes their way is deserved. 
for all those who are victims of disasters, either human caused or natural. We pray that you will comfort those who mourn, bring healing to those who are sick or hurt, and lead us in ways that we can assist you in your healing, comfort, and restoration. It is in the name of your Son we pray, using the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, how would be our name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who are in Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, The Temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. 
Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. God's plan made an excellent beginning. Man ruined his chances by sinning. We trust that the story will end in God's glory. But at present, the other side's winning. The first Sunday of Lent, we talk about sin, we talk about temptation, and we look at two stories of Scripture, one Adam and Eve being tempted and falling to sin in the Garden of Eden, the other Jesus Christ in the wilderness being tempted by Satan and conquering temptation and sin and not falling. Each of these stories is important to us not only in the history of our faith, but in our daily life. Temptation and sin. I have a friend who is, she was a high school senior when she first said this in the, high, in the youth group. She said, you can blame anything on your parents until you're about 25 years old. Well, actually, this young lady turns 25 this year, and I have lost track of her. I may need to look her up and see if she still feels the same way. Another story from a young person on the story on the subject, another story from a, another story from a young person on the subject of sin and temptation. We have friends whose 10-year-old son once got a note from the teacher saying that he does not take responsibility for his actions. Well, his parents decided this was an opportunity to help him learn and to talk this through. And as they began the conversation, his response was, it's not my fault if I don't take responsibility for my actions. Temptation is attractive. In the Garden of Eden, the tree of knowledge was attractive. It has to be attractive or it wouldn't be temptation. How many pieces of fruit do you think the serpent could have sold to Eve that day if he had said to her, come and eat this fruit and it'll make you like the devil? No, he said to her, it'll make you like a god. You will be like God. Temptation is related to good things. The satisfaction of hunger or thirst these are wonderful things. The enjoyment of simple comfort, maybe even wealth, these are good things. The enjoyment of the physical expression of love between two people who love each other, sex, this is a wonderful and good thing. Good things almost always can somehow be exaggerated. They can be corrupted. They can be distorted, sometimes even to the point of hurting or exploiting other people. And that is temptation to sin. The story in the Garden of Eden, it really has nothing to do whatsoever with fruit. The story in the Garden of Eden is about temptation to be like God. Adam and Eve were tempted to be more than God created them to be. They wanted to be more than human beings. And 
Thus they became less than human. We are not beasts. We are not robots. We are not gods. God created us to be human. And real temptation, almost always, is a temptation to be other than God created us to be. And I think the story of temptation in the Garden of Eden is exactly that for us. It is still still real for us today. That is what makes that story something other than long ago and far away. It is real for us even today. The temptation to be something other than what God created us to be. The story of Jesus in the wilderness facing temptation from Satan, it's very much the same. Jesus, practically still wet from the baptism, is moved by the Spirit to go into the wilderness, and he is tempted by the devil. Now, I remember when I was a child reading this story and thinking, these temptations really seem kind of silly to me. I mean, I could not imagine ever being tempted to jump off a tall building so that the angels of God would lift me up. That's not a temptation for me. But it was a real temptation for Jesus. It was a temptation for him to do all kinds of magical acts in order to prove to people that he was the Messiah and people would believe. Temptation to turn stones into bread? Nah. On the other hand, if I really were presented with an opportunity to feed the starving people of the world, I'm not sure what kinds of shortcuts and what kinds of moral and ethical principles I would be willing to violate in order to do something that wonderful. That might be a real temptation. The temptation to worship the devil, I've never been tempted to do that. But we also understand that that temptation really is a temptation to take political power. The devil says, Satan says to Jesus, all these kingdoms belong to me and you can have them if you will simply bow down and worship me. I would think that someone in Jesus' position might have considered it a genuine temptation to take charge, to take control, to take political power. And yet he did not. The temptations were really about being something other than God created him to be. This is a story about what kind of Messiah, what kind of Savior Jesus will be. And it is his very identity which is at the core of the conversation with Satan. If you are the Son of God, Satan says, then do these things. The temptations basically are to take the shortcut, to take the easier path, maybe the more practical path, maybe even the more effective path in the short run. But in each case, the temptation is really the same. It's the temptation to take a shortcut. It's a temptation to bypass the way of suffering love, to bypass the cross. And we are now back full circle. That temptation to bypass the cross, that temptation to take a shortcut beyond the way of suffering love, that is the temptation to violate Jesus' own true integrity, to deny and betray his nature, to deny and betray who God created him to be. All temptations to be more than human or to be less than human, all temptation to be other than God created us to be, the temptation to violate our own nature, this is where you and I can identify and understand that Adam and Eve's story is in fact our story. That Jesus in the wilderness, his story is our story too. The story of Jesus in the wilderness, first of all, we learn from that 
in verse 13, a verse that almost no one lifts up. After Jesus has defeated the devil, it says that he departed from him until an opportune time. Sadly, even Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, apparently does not have the privilege of defeating the devil once and for all and never being bothered again. The author, Luke, leaves a hint that the devil just might be back and bother Jesus again someday. And so if you have ever had the experience of working, struggling, crying, and praying to defeat some kind of temptation, finally managed to succeed and felt good about it, only to discover that that temptation comes back again someday stronger than ever. Take comfort from this. Your experience is much like the experience of Jesus himself. We also learn from this story that his temptations are genuinely real like our temptations are. And that means that he understands us and we can identify with him. And the great hope that comes from that is this. The one who defeated the devil that day, he is in fact our Savior and our Lord. And that means that we have help. On the most personal level of all, our deepest, darkest, ugliest, most shameful temptation. When we have to deal with that, we have help. We have a resource. And we have power to sustain that resource that is only a prayer away. We are not alone. We are not alone. Amen. to think here. When I think about this table, I'm always reminded that when we come here, we are invited to lay down our sorrows for a moment to come and be in the presence of a gift given to us by Jesus. And I'm reminded also that this is where we come to pick up something. We pick up the strength because we know this week will bring sorrows to us. We know that and we come here and we pray and we embrace the elements that we are given and it is intended to be a source of strength to go out and as I reflect on this I think how appropriate that the bread and the wine are the very sustenance exactly the things we need as humans to survive liquid and solid nourishment and how appropriate that Jesus thought to use these very symbols and not something else to remind us of our fundamental nature, of our fundamental nature needing that strength. And it's not only physical strength 
but it's spiritual strength. So here at this table, it all comes together in one place. And the other piece is that we need connection. And this is not meant to be a table to be enjoyed alone all the time. This is a place we come. And we know when we come here, we receive that connection with all who come to a table everywhere. And so we're reminded of many things, our physical needs and the strength that we're given here to go on, our spiritual needs to be one in our thoughts. And one more, the need to be human among humans. And so wherever you are, alone or together, when you come to this table, you come with us and with all who will come to this table everywhere. So now come and let us worship together as one people everywhere. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you so much for these symbols. The bread and the cup that we will take and nourish ourselves physically and spiritually and communally. So bless them now that we may be receiving your grace for the week to come. We give you thanks for your eternal love and the gift of your son Jesus who provided this feast. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he'd taken it, he broke it. And he gave it to those with him and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And he also took a cup. And he offered it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. The promise I give you, drink it, all of you. So all is in readiness for all of us children. Come and partake. Body of Christ broken for you. Cup of blessing. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of blessing. The body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of blessing. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of blessing. set it over. Mm -hmm. have to be careful that with that liner there to get it in just the right place. Mm -hmm. May the one who defeats sin and temptation on our behalf, may the one who makes it possible for us 
to live authentically and human. May that one rest with you, be with you, bless you now and forever. Amen.